Turn with me to the book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 15. The book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 15. Amen. God was speaking a word of judgment to idolatrous Israel. And he said, I will destroy the winter house along with the summer house. The houses of ivory shall perish and the great houses shall have an end, says the Lord. That scripture describes four types of houses. One lesson, first lesson there is all houses are not the same. Isn't it? There are buildings built for commercial purposes. There are buildings built for residential purposes. And whatever you are building something for affects how you build it. So when you talk about God is building his church, there is a purpose behind the building and it affects the architecture by which God builds it. So you go to many places, there are many places where they gather people, but not every place gather people unto the Lord. So because this is not just a gathering, this is a gathering unto the Lord, there is a specific way this house of God is built. When this prophet was speaking, was speaking to the nobles of Israel. And in those places where they have summer and winter, not every building is conducive for the season. You must build in such a way that is conducive for the season. So in the winter, they build houses that can trap the heat as much as possible. So that they can overcome the cold. And in, in, in summer, they, they build houses along the forest lines so that they can, you know, get as much breeze. And even at the point of scripture here, it had become a status thing. Even in the world today, it still exists. Sometimes when you look at our leaders, they have at least three residences. A state house, a liaison office, a... so that anywhere they find themselves, when they are bored with your faces, they change their address and go to another place where they can be an atmosphere. And that attitude that con at, you know, built in Israel uh, at that time, I'm, I'm talking to you on follow the design. Because every house has a design. Every house has a design. In the book of Jeremiah 36, verse 20 to 26, when Jeremiah sent Baruch to, pro to, to you know, he prophesied and Baruch wrote it in a scroll, they met the king of Israel, the Bible says, in his winter house. In that winter house, the Bible says there was a fire burning because you need a fire burning in the winter. There was a hearth of fire burning. The king was sitting in his winter house conducive for that season. Are you following me? And eventually they, when they were speaking to him, he didn't fear the word of the Lord. He just took the scroll and tossed it into the fire. His winter out. The Bible spoke to us about another king in the book of Judges 14, verse 15 to 23. It was the king that brought Israel under subjugation, that God raised a judge called Hehud to judge. When Hehud was judging him, he was sitting in his summer house. So when Hehud had killed him, they even thought he was just taking cool air. All types of houses. 
And they are not all the same. And they do not all have the same purpose. And as God's people, we must understand what purpose our own house is built for. Are you still with me? In 1 Kings chapter 7, verse 1, 4 Kings 7, verse 1, the Bible says Solomon took 13 years to build his own house. There are some things you don't rush to build. If you read the final verse of chapter 6, at least there are two main buildings Solomon built. He built the house of God, the temple, and he built his own house. Solomon was major in building for over 20 years. The Bible told us that he built the temple of God for seven years. But he built his own house for 13 years. Now, it doesn't mean that he honored his house. It means that he placed God as priority. If, you, if today you have a burden to build between God's house and your house, which one will come first? There was another generation that came in the book of Agai who always said the hour has not come, the hour has not come for the temple to be built, but they were building their own house. Solomon was different. He built his own house for 13 years. But the truth of the matter is that whatever you build for 13 years and you are Solomon, you have resources. It's not a small place. It means he took time. Real projects take time. If you are just building a one bedroom shed, it's a building. We can start and finish in one month. But you, you can't present that type of house to win the most, the most beautiful house built this year. There are some houses when they are making progress because they are going so much. Maybe they are going for 50 floors. After one year, you will not see anything. And the engineer will say, we are making very good progress. You say, where is the progress? Because they are trying to build a masterpiece. Are you following me? Their houses. And, 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 and there is a house of God. If you want to build for a king, it will take time. If you want to build for God, how much will it take? God told Israel, when, when David was thinking of building a temple, God asked him, since you came from the land of Egypt, have I ever spoken to anybody about building me a house? Do you know why? God stays his eye. There are some houses that if I give to you, with humility you say, thank you, but you know I cannot stay here. How do you build for the person who made all things? They say, we are the house of God. God said in the book of Isaiah, he said, okay, if you say the heavens is my house, he said, it's my throne. The heart is my food too. Then he now asks the question, where's my house? Where's God's house? Hmm? Heaven. Where was he before heaven was made? Because the Bible started in the beginning, God created the heavens. Talk to me. He created the heavens. Where was he before he created the heaven? There is nothing that is made that can fully accommodate God. So when the Bible calls you God's house, it's a manifestation of the intensity of the humility of God and at the same time it's a manifestation of the honor God has put upon you. Are you following me? And that doesn't mean that God takes just anything. Look at First Chronicles 2 and First Chronicles 2 from verse 1. This is, no, sorry, I beg your pardon. Second Chronicles 2 verse 1. Second Chronicles. Then Solomon determined to build a temple for the name of the Lord. 
and a royal house for himself. It will to be not just a house. Some people will say any place, but a real king doesn't just stay anywhere. There must be something that makes that place suitable to describe him. He wanted to build a royal house. So what did he do? He selected 70,000 men. Their projects and their projects. How many times have God been calling people because he's building a house? He's been calling people for 2,000 years. You fail, he raises another one. 70,000 men to bear bodies because beauty comes from bodies. You didn't hear what I just said there. You are going to see the final prayer. I said, this is a very beautiful building. But the truth of the matter is, to deliver excellence is very intense. To deliver for somebody that no flaw can be in his project. You have to first, you know, there are some contracts that when you receive, you first go and pray. People are thanking God that you have received the contract. But you yourself know. It is a problem, but it's a promise. Because it is burdens that bring beauty. Are you following me, church? People say, uh, ministry, it is burdens that bad beauty. Are you with me? So, they were to bear bodies, 80,000 to quarry stone in the mountain, 3,600 to oversee them. Even just overseers are about in 3,000. People that are just controlling. Why? Continue. Solomon sent to Hiram, king of Tyre, said, I should have dealt with David, my father, and sent him cedars to build a house to dwell in. So deal with me. He said, why? For I'm building a temple for the name of my God to dedicate it to him, to burn sweet incense for continual showbread, for burnt offerings morning and evening on Sabbath, on new moon, on set feast of our God. This is an ordinance forever in Israel, to Israel. And the temple which I build will be great. For our God is greater. There's a way what is built must reflect the value of the person you are building it for. So sometimes when people say they are God's house and you know they don't put so much honor on what we do here, it, it's a reflection of your perception of who dwells there. Are you following me? The reason why we didn't take bite biting as our normal lifestyle here and we don't take offense as our normal lifestyle here is not just because of things, it's because of the honor that we put on the one who gathers us. The house which I build will be great. For our God is greater than all God. If you come to meet a God that is greater than all gods, what will you give him? Because even gods that cannot sustain and determine your eternal life, your eternity, we demand sometimes from you. Some of us, they had served idols, served gods before. Who demanded? Some of them are even terrible and evil. They even demand from you things of your joy. And yet, they are not the greatest. But who is able to build him a temple? The house which I build must be great, but there is another problem. Even if I build a great house, there is no assurance that he will stay. Are you following me? But who is able to build him a temple? Since heaven and heavens cannot contain him. Who am I then that I should build him a temple except to burn sacrifice? The entire elaborate process of that temple that took seven years in building was an altar. It was just basically an altar. Because let me tell you, God's house is something very precious to God. God. God doesn't just dwell anywhere. I've gone to places and by the privilege of God, I go preach in some places and they'll say, this is where, I think we went somewhere and they said, this is where they are lodging. We allowed them, we greeted them and appreciated them. They left. We said, we can't sleep here. This is not our <laughs> Let's go and find a place we can sleep. There are places I can't sleep. It's not right. Just at a point, there are places, there are things you can't take. 
Some of you think, he's God. Anything I throw at him, he must take. I hope you know he has no need. God has no need. That the one that has all he needs. I see. You know, some idols are so hungry, they only need a drop of shina. It will suffice them. Because they have need, but God does not have. Just honor him. Are you following me, church? Yeah. See, I don't have time. He sent to this man to send him cedars to build the house. Real materials. Because he wanted to build the house for a great God. Are you following me? There are contracts of building in this nation that you don't buy cement in bags. <laughs> Not even, they can't bring it in truck. It's what they call factory order cement. It, 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 cement. it will be like raw cement like this. They don't, how many bags? You want to go and build Old Milan Bridge? They're MSN cement. Cement are using. Can. You get what I'm saying? It's at a different. So, so, give me cedars. Don't give me small, small. Give me things that can stand. Now, one problem is this. God has chosen to build Zion as his dwelling place forever. God is forever. If you, and everything that is built is never forever. If God wants to raise a house that he will dwell forever, whatever is using to build that house is something that can abide you get what I'm talking about. See, the, the challenge is that if we are going to be his house, then we must be, uh, we must have the capacity to abide forever. Without having the capacity to abide forever, we can't be his dwelling place. Why is the heart not his, it's just his footstool and the heaven just his throne? It's because they will pass away. Are you, you don't get it. That's why they can't be his house. Because if there is house, one day we'll be homeless. Because they will, they will just wax old like a garment and be done away with. Then where will it be? Are you following me? Send me cedar. Send me things that can build. Yeah, because you did that for David, you remember? In 2 Samuel chapter 5, when David became king and conquered and all his enemies are down, the Bible says, Hiram sent him cedars and sent him masons and sent him carpenters, killed men, to build a house for him. At this level, all the days of your cave dwelling is over. There is, because the house must reflect who dwells in it. Are you following me? And if this is God's house, there must be something God in everybody. There must be something so like God. Are you following me? In everybody for God to find this acceptable as his dwelling place. It can't just be natural carnal men walking like every other man then, then say God should come and dwell. A rat Finds his mansion in a hole. When he enters, there's ah, it be in a ye. Because he's a rat. So every dwelling is a reflection of the entity that dwells in it. So what some other people can call breakthrough can't house God. Can't. He said, I'm, I want to build a house that must be great. I would say Solomon built a house too for his royal kingdom, which means when people come there, they say, ah, no, he's a king's house. For somebody here today, soon and very soon, it will be clear, God is dwelling in you. <laughs> Have you ever passed in front of God's house before? It's as, if there is, it's as if there is no noise in the city. Even the environment is conditioned. Whether the man is there or not. Not on your state. 
is the one here. I don't understand what we are trying to do. As an estate, the governor close to us, the governor decided to be staying. Even the value of the estate changed. Even you can't go and visit your friend anyhow there. Is that one more level of kid today? Today, kid. <laughs> because somebody is dwelling there. And, when the, when, and you say, and we are his dwelling. Number one, for God to must have built us in such a way that they have found something that they can relate with forever. If God is eternal, his dwelling eternally must be eternal. Why do you think they said he gave you eternal life? He just said, you think he would just be floating in the sky. Ah, Ah, Did you hear and the earth and heaven flee away from his sight? There are certain things if God looks at them, they catch fire. If you put this, you know, there's this thing we used to do, uh, that um, lens. When you God looks at some people. You see, some people say, when I, you see, hey, when God, when you stand before judgment seat, you will know whether you are going or not. When God looks at, didn't you read, I showed you yesterday, when some people say, let the mountains fall on us, let the idols away from the face of him that sits on the throne. Because if the one that sits on, you know, all the all, all Jesus did to make Peter know he has goofed. After three times of denying, why just he just looked at you and started crying? Some of you, God will just look at you today. He will not even prophesy. He will just do Lord, when he looks at you, your entire soul, will, everything inside of you will react. Ah, ah. Wants God to look at you. The question of how many of you have read the scripture when the Bible says, Who can stand in his presence? Presence. Because his presence itself, as much as you say, in his presence there is fullness of joy, he is a consuming fire too. It depends on the type of material that you are that determines what that presence does to you. Some people come here and there is joy, and some people come here, there is agitation because everything we do here judges them. This is not you, you know, everybody here is serious, you are not serious. Everywhere is you, you can enter this place and you just know you are not born again. Nobody needs to tell you. Number one, as I'm talking, yeah. That's one of the signs. Jesus will just be saying things like, you know, my flesh is meat in dream. And people who are called are understanding, and others are saying. I want to make us cannibal. It is a description of your where you are. And you want to dwell before that God eternally. You know that. You need to upgrade your material. Because if you go like the way you are like this, that the only thing that moves you is empty. You will just vamoose. If you just appear. <laughs> like this. You just, you, there will be no place. When I see him, I will just tell him, God, I have a question. You. I have a question. Which question? <laughs> Hallelujah. Which question? A house is great because it's a reflection of his power and essence. And houses are built purposefully. There are different types of houses. Look at Second Chronicles 26, verse 9 to 15. I thought this one is... Second Chronicles 26. Uzziah built towers. Towers are not just dwellings. Towers are built so that you can stand and see far. The reason, the way a building is built is because of the purpose it's designed for. He built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate, at the valley gate, at the corner fortress of the wall. He fortified them. He built towers in the desert. He dug many wells. He had many livestock, both in the lowlands and the plains. He had farmers and vine dressers in the mountains and in Carmel, for he loved the soil. He had an army of fighting men who went out to war by company, according to the number of their role, are prepared by Jael the scribe and Messiah, and this, and under the hand of Ananiah, one of the king's captains. The total number of the officers of the mighty men of valor were 2,600. 
And on the other authority was an army of 307,500. They made war with mighty power to help the king against the enemy. He prepared for them the entire army, shields, spears, helmet, body armor, bows, slings to cast stones. And verse 15 said, he made devices in Jerusalem invented by skillful men to be on the towers and the corners to shoot arrows and last stone. It means he built that system principally for fortification. It was not for... There was a time in Nigeria that the state house of Nigeria was Dodan Barracks. It was a barracks. Because it was military time. Their own goal at that time is, is to retain power. It was not... Uh, uh, the United States ambassador is coming. They are not there for handshake. What this guy built was a fortification because he was responding to a peculiar need of the time. And if you remember what I taught you last night, that we are in the world, but we are not of the world. So God does not just build us as palaces, he builds us as fortresses. Are you following me? Because there are different types of buildings for different purposes. I'm going. See, there was a strange dynasty in Israel, our builders. People don't know them because they are very bad. It's a dynasty of Omri. Omri was the father of Ahab. Many of you know Ahab was a builder. Strange builder. But it does, it built for, sometimes, look, look at First Kings 22, 39 and 40. One of the things that Ahab is known for was what he built. I know you only know him because uh, he built the Naboth. Now the rest of the acts of Ahab and all he did, the ivory house which he built. When you build the house of ivory, that one is not, has nothing to do with fortification. You don't build a house for fortification with ivory. That's for display of splendor. Built a ivory house. And all the cities which are built, are they not written in the books of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? They said with the Father. So, one of the most significant things they know about here, that he built an ivory house. All of you are still dwelling where you found, not where you desire. <laughs> you know, the, you know, how many of you know there are some houses that you are just dwelling? Say, I can't manage. But when God bless you, you say, Ahem, I want hot water to be passing through the city room. And you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> that is the house that describes your desire. Not the, uh, can you shout for it? No. All those ones. You say it because you are still stressed. That's why all of us disappoint ourselves. When, when, when we are still oppressed, part of Nigeria, we say, how can they be using 5,000 cutler, cutler in Asurok? Then you get there. You, then then I say, ah. Say, well, they lost so good, but I love if I go good, but they lost so good. Even you, because all this humility you have is a lie. Uh, then I need to tell you. It is your, you are still at the level of for the Pamosi Bika. And God is not good looking for a place to for the Pamosi. He just comes and calls you back back. Now, I'm using these things as parables, but I'm trying to describe something more than that. Hallelujah. The father of Ahab was a man called Omri. I want you to know, by the time you get to, what, let me ask you a simple question. What was the capital of the northern kingdom of Israel when it broke into two? Samaria. Was Samaria always the capital? The first capital of Israel when they rejected Solomon's reign it's a place called Shechem. Find it in 1 Kings 12, verse 25. That was the place where Jeroboam reigned from. 1 Kings 12, 25. Jeroboam built Shechem, not Samaria. 
in the mountains and dwelt there. I hope you know kings don't build just to find a place. When a king builds a place, why do you? I mean, let me even teach some of you story. Do you know why we changed capital to Abuja? Something happened in April 22, 1990. It was a Sunday morning. Never forget. We were praying to go to church. And as we woke up, we had martial music. I don't even know what they call martial music. It was, a, it was a music of the military on the radio. When you hear martial music, is there is a coup. Or there is an emergency. Nothing. The, don't hear your fellow such this. One man came up on, on the fellow Nigerians, and Major Gideon Oka. He said, and I quote, the regime of homosexuals and sodomites have been overthrown in Nigeria. That was when we discovered that some of our leaders were empowered by sodomic alliances. He had Tagged the Dodan Barracks and killed the ADC of the president. Bangida was president. But Bangida escaped by only God knows. After that coup failed, Oga just changed address. That's why they call the place Aso Rock. Have you, who has ever seen the picture of Aso Rock? It's a fortress. It was designed for somebody not to be able to take them. You get what I'm saying? So when kings build, there is something in their mind. Say, is it? Can my kingdom survive here? You are building. Like, let me just find a place to rest. No, that's not the way they build. He built Sheshem and dwelt there. And he reigned from there. By the time you get to 1 Kings 15 to 53, is, is, then you find another city called Tiza. Tiza was the next place. First Kings 15, 53, the last verse. Look, look for the 53, I think. You see? Just go to the last verse of that scripture for me. Let me get up. There was a place called Tiza. That was where their kings were reigning. It was in Tiza that there was one of the kings called Elah. I used to follow him had two commanders. One of the commanders was called Omri. Another one was called Zimri. Because you don't read the Bible. Let me teach you. Because if I don't tell you, we never find it. Some of you. There is a king of Zimri. Right? But you are, this is God's house. This is how we build. So all those stories you read in the Bible, they carry meanings. If they are unlocked for you, they build things in you that nothing can take from you. So Zimri, who was the commander of half of the chariots, killed the king, Tiza. And when he killed him, Omri, who was the commander of the other chariot, was at the battlefront. And the people aligned behind him. They came to fight Zimri, who only reigned in the Bible for seven days. When he saw that the attack was on him, he burned the palace on himself. You know what I don't have it, nobody can have it. That's Zimri. So when he, thank, thank, it's verse 33. So he said, the king reigned over Israel where? In Tiza. Tiza was where Zimri burned down. And after that Zimri died, Omri became king. Omri is the father of Ahab. Are you still following? So when you get to chapter 16, verse 8, it was Omri who bought a hill. That he was bought. He said, in the 26th year of Asa, Ella, the king of Basha, became king of Israel and reigned two years in Tiza. Okay, servant Zimri conspired. I want to look for where uh, Zimri had been conquered. I, I, I hope I'm not boring you. There is a reason why I'm doing this. Because my conclusions are simple. But I want you to go through the journey. Go to verse... 23. In the first year of the reign of Asa, king of Judah, Omri became king over Israel. He reigned 12 years. Six years he reigned in Tiza. And he bought the eel of Samaria from Shema, 
for two talents of silver and built on the hill and called the name of the city which he built Samaria after the name of Shema, owner of the hill. This is the battling of Samaria. It was only, he just decided, I'm not going to be staying in Tiza. It was a king who moved this base of leadership from Tiza to where? To Samaria. He built a hill and there were reasons he built it. Because not all buildings are for the same reason. He built it and that was where after that time you started hearing Israel this. You remember what Nebuchadnezzar said in Daniel chapter 4 from verse 28 to 31. He said, is this not Babylon? The city that I have built for my royal majesty. Okay, continue that please. Is this not great Babylon that I have built for? So buildings are built for. So if you say God, God is building his church, the question is for what? So to this morning we are looking by, at by what did, does he build and for what does he build? Because Jesus is not just restless and doesn't have time and say, let me find something to do. Let me be building. He's building by lively stones and he's building for something. Are you still with me, church? There are three cities that played significant roles in the life of the dynasty of Ea. In those three cities, he found his reign and his judgment. The three cities is Samaria, Jezreel, you know Jezri, that's where he went to kill Naboth. The third one is Ramoth Gilead, where he died. And they are symbolic. Whatever a city is built for is what you found there. Are you still with me? So, those three cities play a lot in his life. When God wanted to judge Ahab, his family. Second Kings chapter 9. Elisha the prophet called a man, a young prophet, and said take oil, go to Ramoth Gilead and you will see Jehu there. He's one of the commanders. You don't see princes in Ramoth Gilead. So Ramoth Gilead was a garrison. Ramoth Gilead was always under contention. How did Ahab, how was Ahab led to his death? What did he say? Does Ramoth Gilead not belong to us? Why did we not take it? So it was a place where they built a garrison. So when you go to Ramot Gilead, you don't meet party goers. So you will see a man called Jehu. He's among the commanders. So when you see him, pull him up and anoint him when he's the next king of Israel. Because that was a garrison. Are you following me? What? And see, in a garrison, you don't go there and see lavish. A conference room. You get what I'm saying? You see where strategies. So he was seated among his commanders. And, 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 and they said, and when the, the man said, I have a message for you, commander. He said, which of us? It means, it was, it means the company in Ramot Gilead was a company of commanders. The only thing they were thinking about there is strategy. To execute for the kingdom. Because that was what that place was designed for. Where was the king when this happened? He was in Jezreel. Jezreel was the place that Ahab said, please let me take the vineyard of Naboth and, and, and use it to build just a garden. It's a place of resort. You don't find commanders there. You find queen. You find concubine. At the rest. This particular king at that point had come to Ramon Gilead. The Bible says he was wounded, but he had gone back to Jezreel to recover. So when you get to Jezreel, it's not militarized. It's a place of recovery. Are you following me? Things are built for specific reasons. Summer houses, there are winter houses, there are garrisons, a recovery basis. Are you still following me? 
So the Bible said, Jehu went to meet him in Jezreel. And he told Jehu, are, are you for peace? Because in Jezreel, it's about peace. Jehu said, where is your peace? Since your household has disobeyed God, even battles came into the place of their resort. Mm. Are you still with me? So he was killed, 2 Kings 9, 1 to 13. He sent the prophet to, to Ramot Gilead. 2 Kings 9, 30 to 37. The prophet, the person the prophet raised, Jehu, went to Jezreel. Then 2 Kings 10, 1 to 11. The Bible says, then Jehu sent to people in Samaria. Who are the people in Samaria? They are about 70 sons. They were. That's where he's rearing his children. So, but his children, that's what the Bible says. See? Look at it. He sent to the rulers of Jesus, to the elders, those who reared. Because sons don't know for that Samaria you see to be peaceful. There is a Ramot Gilead where garrison, where commanders are staying. Problem is that See, that's why most times most of us here don't know the price that has been paid for us to be who we are. Now, the, sometimes when you are just enjoying the commonwealth of your parents, I said the whole you. They are Ramot Gilead, you are Samaria. But all of them work together for the kingdom to stand. Some people think all about the kingdom is Jezri, where you just go resort. If you are a king that loves pleasure, you will die. But yet, nevertheless, all about being a king is not to be fighting too. <laughs> what are you? You must mix Jezri. I'm not getting my message. This parable is getting too much for some people. You, you must mix Jezri with Ramon Gilead. And you know, I, <laughs> Samaria. Is that so? There are 70 sons in Samaria, and those ones did not have any idea. They were just going about princes, princes. So the battle came home. They said, pick one of them to be king. Let them come and fight me. All their life, they've never had a bad battle. They've been in Samaria. Their father rides out, comes back, they say, We say in power, we are in power. Are <laughs> we still okay? We are okay. We're in government. That's all they know. Then I said, pick one of them to come and fight. Ah, those people say, ah, two kings are falling before this man. See, these ones that don't know anything. They said, if you are for me, cut their head. 70 of them, put it in a basket. They cut their head because they've never been warriors all their life. They've always dwelt in Samaria, enjoying, not knowing that the power behind peace is war. That is why I've been speaking to you in this convention. Not to refuse strength for style. The church is not just a place of style. We dress good every morning. How are you? God bless you. Peace. Behind this structure you are looking at, there is a warfare. There is a Ramot Gilead. Are you following me? That, that surrounds a Jezre before we come into a Samaria where people now make decrees and they have built the rule of their kingdom. You know, somebody had to die for you to have the power to say, Devil, I rebuke you. There was something that happened at the garrison command for the authorities to be established in the capital. Are you following me? That's why the president of Nigeria is not just president. He's president and commander in chief. When he's walking, there is a force. And there is a force behind every true child of God. And what is this pastor say? Just more. But when a man of God said, I rebuke Satan. You say, ask yourself, how, why does he happen? You think it is loud voice. There is a Ramot Gilead. There are angels. Their own assignment. For your children to live in peace and dwell well, they are only here to watch as the mountains surround Jerusalem so that the Lord surround his people. They, they, they don't play. 
They didn't come here. They are the one looking at the oh, I'm bad dance when you are dancing. When Mike came, he was not looking at the dancing style. He was waiting for the decree. When the Lord released the word, he has the strength to execute it. I'm showing you the descriptions of God's kingdom. That is why, don't mistake this house, though it looks like a very simple social space, it's a dwelling of God. Are you following me? Don't join them, fight church. The church looks like you that these people. It's a whole system of divine presence around. But our home is even deeper. Psalm 132, verse 13 to 14, spoke about who we are. Psalm 132, verse 13 and 14 says, The Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his dwelling place. Not just for his garrison. This is why I want to. He said, This is my resting place forever. Now that's what I'm saying. This is my. If it is going to be his resting place forever, then it must exist forever. Are you following me? And for it to exist forever, it must have the materials that can abide. And let me tell you, your chain, your tie, does not abide forever. Have you noticed? That's why this house, this house is not built by lighting. No, in my job, our church was at the deepest level. You see the light. You see the screen. Those are not materials that can buy forever. So that cannot be his dwelling place. You don't get it. But there is something that speaks eternally. The blood that was shed from the foundation of the world. It speaks forever. That is why in this gathering, we must recover those things that never lose their value. For your faith is bought with precious, the precious blood of the Lamb. It's like gold that is tested by fire. And what does it do? It shines brighter. When you put gold in fire, instead of it to diminish, what happens? It shines more. It's a description of the eternal. And listen, what I'm trying to say to us here is that we must begin as the church. Do you know why the church is so penetrable today? It's so, so, so susceptible to social media backlash. It's because most of the things we are building with are things that can change. Before they start one trend, it has entered us. Just okay, just okay, just okay. After three hours, they start blackmailing us. And we have no answer. Because you want to trend. But you don't want to be dwelling forever. And you know another thing about a house that must dwell forever. Is that houses lose value even if they don't depreciate. That can change. When we were young, they would say, Oh, our grandfather. 15 rooms. What are the rooms? Face me and face you. Go and stay there. He thought he was a great man. That's 15 rooms. He's begging his children to visit the place. If Zion will be his dwelling place forever, it means it cannot become outdated. There are things that become outdated as civilization moves. Are you following me? Some places, church activity has become outdated. Are you still doing those church things? Are you doing those church things? I hope you know there are places that they have never prayed to have a bad life. Has never occurred. It is us here when we want to do. That's how we build our faith. When you want to do crusades, say, Jala, la, ofonija. The spirit of darkness that want to make our generator not to work. It's not spirit of darkness, it's, it's a problem. That is why when some people leave this fear, 
and get to places where some other things are not issues, their faith dies. Their faith was built transient things. You can be poor today, it's temporal. You can be the poor man today can be the richest man tomorrow. So if all you are following Jesus for is your bank account, that's not the Zion where we dwell. All of you are, some people are now busy now serving God now because they have free time. They think it's free time to make a man serve God. David sat in his palace, built with cedars, and said, How can I dwell in a house of cedar when God Ark is dwelling in tent? It means his pursuit of God was beyond what he became. Isn't that? Some of us have idle time now because we have not, we have, God has not answered us. And God has said, Pastor, Bible study, two hours is serious. Get two hours of time to stay in the world. Two hours of time to stay. You are just, you are poor. That's why some of you think you love God. And I've come to bless, say today, God will bless you so that we will know you. Yeah. Some people are even poor. That's why they think God called them. <laughs> but what would that be your least sorrow? To try, be a child. To what they already know, Lord love you. And you not, you'll be moving from mountain to mountain. You think they are found fire. God said, you know. <laughs> this, one, this one is not really fire. This is not my dwelling place forever. May God find something in you that is not subject to change of times, change of spaces, change of, of, of territory, change of nations. May you become so zealous for God as God is changing your address from level to level, from place to place in the mighty name of Jesus. When they went from nation to nation, nation differs from nation, kingdom differs from kingdom, but the declaration was the same. When they went from nation to nation and from kingdom to kingdom, he suffered no man to do them wrong. He rebuked kings for their sake. Touch not my anointed. They were anointed in that nation. They were anointed in this nation. They were his prophets in that nation. They were his prophets in this nation. Are you following me? What God is doing in you is not space and time based and time bound. It's eternal. It is his dwelling place forever. It's a masterpiece. It's lost into every civilization and it's relevant. That's what is called church. It's his dwelling. It's relevant. It's not outdated. The world leaves it and come back to it. Uh, all the places you thought they said, Christianity is gone. Have you ever seen when those terrorists attack France? A for France. Why did they use? Why did they say sink for France? Everything now comes back to pray. You can't leave it. We are designed to be dependent on Him. Build the highest civilization. You will come back. You won't know. The short Trump, Trump said, there's a man. You will know something is higher than secret service. <laughs> something just move your head like this. There's no secret service that can move your head. Oh dear. There are some information about your destiny. No SSS can pick it. They pay a lot, but they can't pick it. As, 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 as. As developed as those system is, there is nothing called perfection in the human experience. My man, but God's house is perfect. Nothing takes him unaware. You don't get it. Nothing. The secret things belong to God, and He reveals them. To, he reveals it to those who fear Him. There are some of you that you are already at the junction of a major breakthrough, and nothing in the atmosphere is saying it. But the Spirit of God within you will quicken you. 
this is the place this is the place this is the person this is what to do and as it comes inside of it's an inside information you just know this is what to do you do it and god's purpose for your life opens up because god is perfect god cannot lead you into confusion god is wise are you following me when god is leading you in 2024 sometimes he's taking a step because of what will happen in 2035 do you know there were people we met and we didn't know that they were going to be so strategic to our journey But God knew from the day he made it. And that's why when they offended you, God said, keep quiet. Majao. Or a Nico knew. <laughs> I said, I will never need him. God said, oh. oh. And he told you, oh, look at my course breakthrough in the five years time. See, you need divine intelligence for your life to make meaning. And that is what is called church. It's more than Thanksgiving service. I can't remember a joker. Can I tell you what's happening in the nation? Say we're as confused as everybody. No man knows the things of a man except the spirit of man that is in him. No man knows the things of God except the spirit of God. And he has given us the spirit so that we might know. You can even know the things of God more than the things of yourself. Because it is given. So that by the things of God, you will know yourself. Do you know Peter did not know his Peter? But he knew he was Christ. You get it? Peter did not know his Peter. But he said, you are the Christ. And Jesus said, ah, hey, flesh and blood has not revealed. Do you know the consequence of it? You are Peter. May God bring you an access into divine secrets of God. Amen. That's church. That's who we are. We are an impenetrable people. Ah, oh, nibo jolo jolo. By the Spirit of God, your steps are ordered. They are ordered. Amen. Your decisions are guided. Amen. The eyes of the Lord fall upon your decisions. The intelligence of the Lord play in your decisions. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. See, there's a way you now see a building. Say, ah! Or you know how to call building. Ah! I entered one house recently. When I got to the compound, I just said, what, what am I doing here? What am I doing here? Just said, take a peek. Just enter. The outside cannot describe the inside. I have not seen in a long time adequate use of space. I can't reconcile outside. There were spaces built for specific purposes. It's not that Eje Kama Afibi is a laundry. It was built as laundry. You know, there's a difference. There's a difference, you see. Ibi no in only my lofun kitchen. Because that's, that's what some people do. Huh? Even in space school, one better ever heck of the pot is no, but they are they are kitchens. You get what I'm saying? When you enter the place, the place is a kitchen. Kitchen. There is there's already a design that will take away the smoke. There's already a design that, that, that when you are cooking, you will not sweat. Most of you have only stumbled to life and doing whatever you in only your body. Then for another 10 years, you are trying to structure, we are trying to make out of somebody what is not there. There are other times when God brings you to a place that this is the place, this is Zion. I have chosen to dwell there forever. May the Lord bring you to the things he has ordained for you. In the name of Jesus. Finally, I tell you, we are not just palaces. All those things, we are. They are garrisons. There are times in our life we sit down, the only thing playing through our mind every time is war, is strategy. Is the enemy must not gain an advantage over me. Is be how to be a good soldier of Christ. And being a good soldier of Christ means you know, I was in the room this morning and I was thinking because last night I was preaching about 
cave, the caves, the dens, and the holes. How I discovered that every time Israel is in rebellion, they dwell in caves, they dwell in holes, they dwell in uh, under the mountains they are running. But I discover again that it was the dwelling that the prophets chose. So it is the rebellious that find themselves there. So the way of a rebellious man is hard. But endure hardness as a good soldier. So what is punishment to them? Is what is so do you get so when you find John the Baptist in the wilderness, he was not punished, he was expressing what it takes to be a good soldier. When you are a good soldier, hardness is you are you are built to understand that some things are not going to come cheap, but that's not a problem. That, that's not a problem, it's, it's life. Are you following me? You are you are built in such a way do you know that the enemy will have some conflicts about you, but that's not a problem that, because there is an expression of us that is a garrison. When we sit down there, we are thinking. Are we, we, they, we know they will fight us. Our God will be. Our God be. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Somebody say, I'm a garrison. I'm a good soldier of Christ. Somebody say, I'm a good soldier of Christ. They are just reels. Where you just recover. Don't make all your Christianity warfare. Are you hearing me? People go in Go in when somebody did, when since you've been praying for the person that has been troubling as he died, you chose a new enemy. <laughs> God is in me. <laughs> this is a place of healing. This is the place of recovery. This is the place of strength. This is a place of friendship. This is a place of joy. In his presence there is fullness of joy and his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Are you hearing the word of God today? This is the place of recovery. Somebody is finding recovery in God's presence today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Even if you are falling, hear the word of the Lord. The righteous will fall seven times and arise again. Play that keyboard. Somebody is rising with strength again. Somebody is rising with strength again. Somebody is rising with healing in the name of Jesus. Unto you that fear the Lord with the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. There are emotional healings here. There are spiritual healings here. There is recovery of strength in this house. That's one of the things that happen in the presence of God. Receive recoveries. Receive recoveries. Recoveries. Receive recoveries in the name of Jesus Christ. But much more than that, again, we are seated there. His capital. What does he do from his capital? He reigns from there. So that is why through us he issues decrees. People in the capital don't say, How shall this decree be fulfilled? When the president wants to quell a riot I'm not talking about the war or a protest he does not go and check the armory he sits in Samaria the citadel. what shall we do then he issues a statement then the garrison executes and takes us even though we don't like it that's the command that's why some of you, it is not your headache in some issues to think about how it will happen. Your work is to speak. So the commander said to Jesus, you don't need to come into my house. I'm a man under authority. I said to one goes and he goes. I said to one comes and he comes. Speak the word! and your servant will be you sometimes in your life all your own responsibility in these challenges speak the word because there is already an environment around your life to execute that word and all these descriptions are desire that's why when you look at the kingdom of God it's an army when you look at it in some other places it's a family when you look at it in some other places it's a building are you following me? Every expression is within this same thing. God has built. And what are we built for finally? Ephesians 2, 19 to 22. Because we are built for something. There are, I, I jumped a lot of things. There are storage cities. There are 
chariot cities in the Bible. That the only thing. When you go to a chariot city, you don't go there and see musician. You just see APC, like Pastor Desmond said yesterday. I'm a personal carrier. You see, that's what you are seeing. And the city is fulfilling its mission. Why it's built. And there are storage cities. So the way you build a storage city, where you are storing grain, is not the way you build a, 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 an armory. What, you are, what is your greatest enemy in a story city is for pests not to come. So you build with intelligence that will keep out the pests. But it does not matter if a pest is running where there is gone. What you are looking for is for there not to be heat so that there will not be dynamite blowing. Everything has an intelligence. Are you following me? I want to tell you today that you are God's city. You did not exist by chance. You are built. And being built means God looked at what he wanted to achieve and built you according to purpose. This is Zion, my dwelling place forever. Are you following me? Now, therefore, church, you are no longer strangers and foreigners. But you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into what? A holy temple in the Lord, in whom we are being built together for a dwelling place. The most important reason why God is building this place, God wants to find a house. He has chariot cities. He has places of his strength. But the most important thing he's looking for is where it's a way you enter your house and there's rest. May God look at you and God say, okay, I found a man. That's rest. Because when he's searching for a man, he's not at rest. But when he said, I found a man. You know, a house does not bring you rest by just his is size. There are so many things to it. Somebody told me, the day you build your house, when you sleep there, the sleep is different. Oh, really? you, you know nobody, if you hear knock on your gate, it's a landlord there, long way, what? It's a kilo day, kilo shelly. I command God will build your houses. It will bring you rest places. But most importantly, God wants to build us as his dwelling forever. We have to learn from ephemeral things. Materials that cannot abide. That before next year, they are gone. So you hear waiting there devil talk. Yes, how will you hear? Because sometimes you even hear what the devil is saying. What if you buy? We don't think joke okay. Oh, but we think devil talk. Because sometimes see, the Bible didn't say we didn't hear what the devil is saying. He only said we will not follow the voice of the stranger. It means we know his voice yeah. when he speaks. Some people say they don't hear what the devil talk. How will they hear? Every every five five minutes he said that our church is the new church in time. It's not new. That's why in three years it's old. The people that went there. I've gone to the new church because <laughs> you don't get it. Some of you have changed churches five times in two years. Not because you are moving. You were so excited about the place three months after three months. It's one normal. Because many times we are building with things that depreciate. And most of us to have a depreciating faith. It's time to build on nothing else than the rock. Lift your hands, everybody. This the rock that never changes is Jesus. Please, it's time to know the Lord for who He is. I'm not talking about the trends, which we come and go. I'm talking about the Lord, our Savior. No sweet talk that can change a man's life. What can wash 
away my sin. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? But you have not experienced the blood, you have not found the immovable materials that build God's house eternally. The blood of Jesus, we are not even saved by good works, we are saved by grace and by the purging of the blood. This morning, if you are not born again, the blood is here. And of this journey, when you come into the blood, it has a beginning, but it never has an end. It's eternal. When you are saved, it pulls you in and it pulls you in forever. Nothing can pull you out of his hand. Are you following me, church? This is the moment to start that process. You have dwelt and traded in things that can be taken away. Can you dwell in things that will abide forever? If you are not born again here, lift your hands above your head. Let's pray together. I want you to come. You will not you will not only be you will not only stand in his presence in time. You will stand in his presence eternally. You will rejoice in his presence forevermore. And that is what he has called you for. That's why he brought you here. Oh precious is the flow singing one more time. Precious is the flow. Makes me wide as snow. If you feel dirty, if you feel rejected, there's a flow of the blood. the Lord just lift your hands above your head and put it on your chest it's your moment 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 God is bringing you into something nobody can take away from you no devil can take away from you no devil can take away from you put your hands upon your chest if you are committing your life to the Lord afresh this morning, if you are coming into fresh dedication, if you, are, if you are renouncing the works of darkness and you are coming into light, just put your hands upon your chest as we pray thank you Father, thank you Father for the flow of the blood for the flow of the blood, for the flow of the blood for the flow of the blood, for the flow of the blood for the flow of the blood, Lord we ask that every dead works be pushed out of people's conscience in the mighty name of Jesus, we ask for every dead works to be pushed out of our conscience we ask for confidence to rise in the spirits of people for consciousness of the lord to rise in the souls of people in the mighty name of Jesus. that your people will serve you and your people will honor you for the rest of their life that the power of sin is broken in every way in the name of jesus that every temporal riches that the enemy is using to distract people they lose their grip over them in the mighty name of Jesus. that the passing pleasure of sin is destroyed the passing pleasure of sin is destroyed and people have people have the abiding presence of the Lord in their heart. We give you praise, Father, for this which you are doing in our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. There is one more thing I will never be taken. I will never leave you at orphans. I will send to you the Holy Spirit, and He will be with you to the end of the age. The Holy Spirit is that thing, is that person 
that will never lose become outdated your journey your destiny is in his hand he knows the secrets and the plans of God for you and the beautiful thing is that it's not in your past the Holy Spirit will be with you to the end you can be assured that the anointing of the Lord will seal you eternally he will put his anointing upon you and he says seal eternally are you following me today it will be with you to the end say father I'm open to the leadership of the Holy Spirit I know you are with me you are building in me things that will abide in the presence of God things that will speak in heaven things that will speak in eternity you are building through me things that will speak in eternity my life is beginning to make meaning not just in time but eternally my life is beginning to make meaning if your life is going to make meaning eternally it must have been built by the Holy Spirit it must have been built by the Holy Spirit by the resources the Holy Spirit supply let the Holy Spirit begin to supply you words let the Holy Spirit begin to supply you ideas let the Holy Spirit begin to supply you leading let the Holy Spirit begin to supply you direction let the Holy Spirit begin to supply you vision things that will speak for years that will speak for decades that will speak in your life that will speak in your children's life Lord I thank you because my life is entering into an understanding of the purposes of God of the secrets of the Lord and I bless you Father and I bless you Lord Jesus we follow the design we are your dwelling place have your way in us Rule in us, rule in us, rule in us. Put down every rebellion, put down every resistance. Have your way, have a free course in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. We are your house. This is yours, it's your home. We will. get to some homes you see that carpet in front of the entry and the right welcome because that's the that's the serenity that home should bring but I hope you know that the eyes of the Lord is too pure to behold iniquity God does not find home everywhere but the blood has been shed so that God can find home that when you wake up every day you can tell God you are welcome when you are in your house you can enter anywhere it's your house when you go on a visit you sit in the city room some people God is paying them a visitation but some other people God is making them an habitation but for me I'm allowing it to be an to be to inhabit me and when it inhabit me it can enter any room he can come and say, who is that person with you? He can even talk to you about your friends and say, that cannot be your friend. That, that, he, he can talk to you about the way you will spend your money. I am your house. I am your home. I will welcome you. Lord, I will welcome you. How you use your body, he can talk about it. Don't you know your body is a temple of God? church we bow our hearts before you today this 16th anniversary of the faithless assembly we ask for no other thing than to be your dwelling a place where you have the free cost of rain a place where you build your strength 
a place where you bring us recoveries a place where you rule we just want to be your house let nothing be an opposition a resistance to your dwelling in us cast it out there is no communion between light and darkness there is no communion between the temple of God and Satan Whatever, wherever the enemy is laying an alliance we break the alliance wherever the enemy is laying an alliance we break the alliance we invade your house that's how you started it and that's how it will remain we remain your dwelling the place where you have a free course have your way father we are your house we are your home you are welcome you are welcome in the day in the night when we are sleeping you are welcome when we are walking you are welcome when we are seated you are welcome when we are eating you are welcome when we are with our wives you are welcome when we are with our friends you are welcome we declare that you are welcome holy spirit let there be an intensity of activity of your presence in the life of your people from now forward in the name of Jesus we declare your welcome we declare your welcome give the Lord a big hand everybody welcome the Lord welcome him hallelujah from today expect to be led even when you are not expecting it you will just come and say this is what I want to be expect for burdens to be put on you for bodies is what build houses are you following me? expect assignments to be laid on your shoulder and it is not a cause it's because you are his house it's because you are his dwelling place grace will be sufficient for you in the name of Jesus Christ are you blessed today? give the Lord a shout of praise